All right, so in today's video, we're going to change the differential fluid in a 2004 Chevrolet Express 3500. It's got a 10 and a half inch rear end on it, which is the GT4 code. And uh, if you look on the back axle, it might be stamped as a 70S as a model. So to do this job, you're going to need about three liters of 75W90 synthetic oil. You'll want to have a, a pump depending on the axis that you've got. You need a 3 8 drive socket to remove the filler. It's 9 16 fasteners on the uh, the cover for the differential. Should have some paint. Should have some black Permatex as well to put on the uh, differential cover unless you're going to go with a gasket. I'm just going to glue it on because I've got the material here. Need a scraper. These scrapers are pretty good. I prefer using a, a carbide tip straight scraper, but I don't have one with me. And then we're going to have to do some pounding on the differential cover to get it off. It's had the fluid changed in at once just by pumping it out, so that's uh, never the best solution. So uh, I guess we'll take a look underneath the van and see if we can start pulling things apart. So this is a... Uh, Class B camper. It doesn't have a spare tire underneath of it. If you had a spare tire, you'd probably want to drop it out and pull it out of the way. But this one has a generator instead of a spare tire. So if you break down, you can just move in. Get your pot in here. All right. So if you had a regular vehicle. You could probably uh, use like an air ratchet to take this out, or you might even be able to use a, an impact gun, but I don't have that available. So I've already gone under here and uh, made sure that the filler is going to come out. With the uh, GT4 axle, you're going to fill it so that it's level with the bottom. This is not a video for the uh, half tons. They have a different procedure and different rear end in them. So don't follow this video any further if you have a different rear axle because they keep the fluid much further down. And uh, I'm on ramps. I don't know if you could see that initially or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it when it's up here. Just leave this finger tight, roll it down on the flat ground, and then just take the plug out and let it uh, drain itself. That's uh, my solution. And then I can kind of like wiggle under here and then put the cap back in. And tighten it up. I don't really have a, a good way of getting the the vehicle flat and being able to work underneath of it with the generator being here. This makes it a bit easier. So I'll just take off a, a couple of these uh, fasteners and then we'll probably fast forward to being just about ready to... Wow, these things are all pretty tight. This is not the right ratchet to do this. You gotta be careful not to break them. Or break the ratchet. <clears throat> So anyway, there'd be a, a bit of removing bolts like that and we'll uh, try to get the cover off without damaging it too much. We want to keep a nice flat mating surface on it. So we'll uh, get this off and of course you need a drain pan. I didn't show that in the video but I've got one here. So we'll uh, get that set up and catch the fluid. Alright, got most of the fasteners off. You'll find that there's one fastener that's got a little bit longer. Actually, maybe it's just a bit of silicone. But anyway, it actually just, it looked like it was longer, but it's not. It just had some silicone on it. And that was the one that for the uh, parking brake uh, bracket. So we'll take uh, the camera back to the uh, driver's side. So you can see the uh, axle marking on this axle. Another thing that you do when you're servicing a differential is you check the uh, vent hose, which is just right above 
that. So you check it, you follow it up, and it just goes onto the frame rail right here. You make sure that it's not being barfing out oil and that it's not all plugged up and uh, filthy. Because if it gets plugged, you're going to blow out uh, either a rear seal, like a seals where the brakes are located, or maybe the uh, pinion seal up front. So I'm just going to stop the camera now. I'm going to wipe off the differential. You want to make sure it's not all filthy when you remove the cover because everything that's uh, kicking around here is going to end up inside your differential and you don't want that. So that uh, is the next step before we knock the cover off. Alright, let's see if we can get the cover off the differential. Sometimes they'll leave you a little lip where you can stick the screwdriver underneath of somewhere but they haven't left anything on this differential. Which is kind of unfortunate because I usually think people that use screwdrivers to do this are hacks but I'm kind of obliged to do it that way unfortunately. Of course the camera is right where I want to swing my hammer here. So this will be the hardest part. Maybe a dull chisel would be the way to go. Definitely have to flatten this out on a piece of wood. It's not good for it. Check the camera, see if we're still in scene. We're good. It's the most humid day of the year. It's hard to see. So it's got two bolts holding this on so it doesn't fly away on me. She doesn't smell too bad. I think I got all the bolts out and it's still sticking on there pretty good. Oh, yeah. Try not to roll on this stuff because your clothes would be garbage if you got any on you. So it's good news, there's not anything obvious going on in here. I'll try to figure out where the magnet is if there is one. Oh, 
Oh, this fluid's brand new. Really didn't need to do this job. Oh well. Now you know. I don't feel any flat magnets hidden in here anywhere. Well, maybe there's one on the back of the cover. It's completely clean at the bottom. That's remarkable. Because they've pumped it out. We're at 100,000 miles now and it's still very clean. Let's show it on the inside. Hopefully you can see it. Nothing uh, too bad going on in here. The drain plug might be a magnet. Let's check that out. All right, so I'll try to turn off the camera here without getting it all oily. Get things cleaned up and we'll start ready to put it back together. All right, so I got the uh, gasket face on the uh, cover fixed up. Went over it with a bit of emery cloth. I did damage the uh, face here where I was pounding on it with the uh, screwdriver. But what I did was uh, I straightened it out on my uh, anvil part of the uh, vise there, the hammer. Then I checked it with a straight edge on this old square. So that's working out pretty good. Cleaning the uh, outside of this thing has not been too successful. But I will give it a shot of some uh, chassis black while it's off. I don't uh, have high hopes for that surviving. So the next part is I gotta cover the uh, ring gear with some uh, towel here and scrape off the uh, gasket face in there so nothing gets inside of the uh, differential and uh, we'll be one step closer to putting it back together. Alright so progress is being made here I've got the uh, Permatex out. This one here you have to uh, wait for one hour after you finger tighten the uh, pan onto the uh, differential. They make a, uh, a green Permatex as well which is meant for gear oil but this is supposed to work fine. You may find some literature that says not to use RTV with synthetic oil, but that goes back to some older differentials. I don't know the full story, but for 2004, it's not a problem. I think it was actually the problem was the RTV sealant that they were using and not the oil. So uh, take a look at the uh, cover. Did some counting here and it's actually got 12 bolts on the cover. And the uh, oil filler is magnetic, so I cleaned that off. So that's all painted up and uh, it'll look good for a week and then it's going to get all rusty again. Let's take a look at the uh, differential here, how I got it cleaned up. So I recommend you uh, cover it up with uh, shop cloths before you uh, clean it off. That way it keeps the inside clean, speeds up the process because you don't have as much garbage to clean out or make it impossible to clean. I'm kind of thinking someone had this gas or the cover off at one point before because I found some black RTV and there's also some gray RTV in a few locations so maybe someone did have a, a generator out and they did the a full service on it which would kind of explain why the uh, fluid was so clean so uh, I'm just gonna wait for the paint to dry a bit put the cover on finger tight then I'm gonna change the oil in my Jeep it takes uh, quite a bit of time to do the oil on it and then I should be ready to uh, tighten the uh, cover on. I'll have to figure out what the uh, torque settings are. I haven't looked up that. They seem to be pretty tight when I took it off. So I'll come up with uh, some numbers for that. Anyway, uh, so should have the cover on next time we uh, look at the video. All right, I thought I'd give us one quick shot here before I put the uh, cover back onto the differential. So when you're putting on the Permatex, try to set it up so that it's not all going to squeeze into the inside of the differential. I always kind of favor the outside when I'm doing that. So I'm going to put this on here and uh, have another part of the video after that. Alright, got the oil changed in the Jeep. Got the uh, pan tightened down tight. I didn't figure out the torque number. I might look into it later and put a note in the uh, YouTube video. But uh, So I tightened it up, did a crisscross pattern. Squeezed out a little bit of the uh, RTV. I've never done it like that before, but I uh, thought I'd give it a shot and follow the instructions. So let's see uh, how many pumps it takes to fill up this differential. So right now we're full. We got uh, five liters of fluid in here. So uh, I'll be able to tell how much uh, we use as well.
Good, we're primed. And again, we're going to end up over full when I do this. But that's okay, because we're going to fix it after. Well, it looks like it's going to take about a thousand pumps. I don't know if I should pump slow or fast. If you go slow, maybe it refills quicker. I'm gonna have to take a break. I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> I've used the big, uh, lubers like a grease gun but for sucking oil and refilling but i found i wasted a lot of oil doing that it was very messy so that's why i bought the pump for this one but i gotta say that's one liter there that's a lot of pumping oh. but it's clean I think it takes 3.1 liters. So I would have had to buy four bottles, and this uh, five liter bottle was the same price. It's four bottles. I don't think the bottles were full liters either. I'll take a break. All right, so you might be wondering why I'm using Motormaster oil. So for one, it actually turns out to be pretty good stuff. I use a special European version in my Jeep that's a diesel. I can go 13,000 kilometers on that oil. And I check the oil level once and it doesn't burn any. I've used other brands of oil and it's been consuming between one and two liters in the same distance. So either their oil, I guess, is really, really good because it doesn't burn or it's really, really bad it's too thick to get burnt. So you have to be careful where you store your uh, partially used oil. So I'm going to leave this in the shed and it's going to expand and contract over winter and eventually fill up with moisture. So I got some extra oil for free by buying this bigger container but chances are it's not going to get used in the differential so that's two liters so we're two-thirds of the way there if you could get a bottle and squeeze it in that would be the way to go but if for whatever reason you don't take your spare tire out or if you have a generator in the way way it's done.
So we're approaching three liters now. Where I used to work, my boss would stick a rag over this and way overfill it. And then put in the cap. I guess that might work for heavy equipment, but I wouldn't recommend doing that on a, a vehicle. It's just not good for your fuel economy. It could contribute to leaks. Now on heavy equipment, if you had hydraulic brakes inside the differential and you overfill it like that, it wouldn't be as obvious to spot the problem. I checked the fluid in the differential of a John Deere tractor once and it was overfilled by like 10 liters or something. But it turned out that uh, it was because the brakes were leaking inside the differential. All right, so the dipstick has kind of gotten to its limit here, so I gotta put this on a, an angle. But anyway, I don't think it's worth uh, overfilling a differential, personally. liters now so I'm wondering if I should move this forward and get it level I guess I can stick my finger in there and see how deep it is I can feel it. So we're getting there. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but I'm down to here. So I'm about 3.8 liters, I guess, I put in. So I'm going to stop now. I'm going to move the vehicle forward. i got to get the plug, put that back in. And then uh, I'll do a little recap as to whether that was the right place to stop or if I should have kept going or not. All right, let's see if we can get in there and check the fluid level or not. Oh dear. Gotta be away. <laughs> Maybe I should have just left it open and let it pour out and go back up again. Someone to pull me out, I think. Uh, I didn't bring the uh, catch pan. Alright, I'll have to stop and get the catch pan. I don't want to dump that on the ground. Alright, that shows you how much space you have. Only enough to fit the catch pan under here. Uh, I'm optimistic. I'm gonna get in here. I can do it. <laughs> I don't think the camera's gonna catch it. Just need a little bit more. In a future video, we're gonna put a five inch lift on this van. try again here in a minute all right I'm under here I might need to get the paramedics to get me out let's see uh, what happens here with the fluid oh, oh this is a good test on me I don't think I'll be able to thread this back in I'll have to get the van back up to do this I 
not in my right hand here. Maybe I got it. Oh, good. It's just dripping. That is good news. So I would suggest you stop somewhere between 3.8 and uh, 4 liters. Alright, so we uh, got the fluid changed in the differential. I just got it back up on the ramp so I could tighten the uh, plug. And then wipe off the uh, drip of oil that came down. Came down to the bottom here. It's kind of important to me that I clean off the work area when I'm done. So uh, from watching this video, you might find that you don't want to do this job. Another option would be that if you were careful and had the equipment to do so, you could put the uh, vehicle up on uh, jack stands on the front and the rear and get it level up in the air. But uh, I'd be hesitant to do that, to be honest. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it. The best thing would be to take it to a garage that has a, uh, a drive-on lift because then the vehicle stays level and they don't have to try to level or like lift it on the frame, which is not that easy on this vehicle. So uh, anyway, hopefully this is helpful for anyone that has road track. And then if you've got a, a conventional van, it wouldn't be quite as hard to get underneath of it to uh, work on the ground, but I still would suggest using ramps. And then uh, for checking the final fluid, you'd probably be able to do that on the ground without uh, too much difficulty. Another thing that's happening here is I want, I'm going to be putting a, a sway bar on this van in the next few weeks. I've already got it purchased and delivered. So I wanted to make sure the fluid was good in this vehicle before I did it because I think the sway bar is going to make it harder to uh, remove the uh, cover on the back of here. So that's uh, the final explanation as to why all of this happened. So anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good day.